Do you want to make your patients like you? Then make them laugh. Stay tuned to find out how. Hey, this is Brad Block, host of The Physician's Guide to Doctoring. This is a personal and professional development podcast for physicians where we have experts on the show that try to teach us everything we should have been learning while we were memorizing Krebs cycle. Welcome back to the podcast. Super cool episode today. So something a little different. We have Joel Byers, who is most, who's most recently voted Atlanta's best clean comedian. He's been featured on Dry Bar Comedy, Sirius XM, and more. And he owns the Joel Byers Clean Comedy Academy and hosts the award-winning Hot Breath Podcast, showcasing over 400 interviews, more interviews than me, with comedians. And he's a big believer in the power of comedy, as are we, clearly, on the show, as you guys hopefully smirk a little bit at my attempts at humor. <laughs> he's worked with many organizations like the National Pediatric Cancer Foundation and the American Cancer Society to bring the joy of comedy to their members. His comedy mission is to share a refreshingly fun and family-friendly comedy style that connects people of all ages and backgrounds. So, Joel Byers, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me, Dr. Block. It's an honor. Brad, please. Oh, Brad. Oh, okay. Brad. Okay. This is not a doctor patient relationship. <laughs> yeah. I had to sign a waiver before this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disclaimers, <laughs> everything. I'm going to get a copay notification after this. This is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here, though. And I'm, I'm super excited to get this going. So tell me, is there a formula for writing a joke? Or just not even writing a joke, but like just making something funny? Where do we begin? Yeah. I really want to give some thought before jumping on this show with you because there are joke writing formulas and techniques. And I know you've had my buddy Scott Dickers on here, who is amazing, and he has a lot of good comedy advice and such. And I was trying to think about, from the perspective of doctors, that a lot of, I think, the humor, and from my own personal experience in experiencing doctors incorporating humor into what they do with me when I visited for my physicals and such, is... There are formulas and such, but I feel like for doctors, it's important just to remember that comedy is all about connection. There's a quote that laughter is the shortest distance between two people. So when you're a doctor, for example, the bar is so low <laughs> on what is funny. I teach comedy and we can get into those things, but I think to not overthink it, if you can just be someone that actually enters the room with positive energy, with a smile, and makes eye contact, people will mirror. Like, if you smile, people will mirror that back to you. Here smile is halfway through a laugh. Is the bar is so low for what yes. people would expect in an in interaction with a physician that we really don't have to do very much in order to meet their or exceed their expectations. So, at the, so a good way to start the visit and would be enter the room with energy and a smile. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. We're good at memorizing things, right? Yeah. So we can memorize that. We can memorize that. We can remember to do that. Or like leave a sticky note on the door. Like smile and energy. Smile and energy until it becomes ingrained in us. Okay. So that's yeah. great. Low bar, smile and energy. So where do we go from there? Where do we go from there if we want to like try and make a joke? Is there, is there like a way we can think about things that'll help us get there? Well, if there's something that happens... Just to start on the baseline level, if there's something that happens routinely with most patients, if like the computer is slow, for example, you could make a joke about, oh, sorry, we still have dial up or something like that. It's a throwaway line, but it breaks the possible tension of them just sitting there waiting for you to like do whatever they're there to do. It could just be a little throwaway line that makes them at ease. Even if you just, for example, recently, I was at the doctor and they made a joke about their pen. I mean, it was something like we, the doctor gave me his pen and it was like, oh, but I'm going to want that back. I collect those. And it was like a cheap, it was like a big, like just stick pen. It wasn't anything expensive, yeah. but it was just like, I'm here doing something mundane as like writing something or filling out a form. So he was thoughtful enough to just interject a little joke there of, oh, I want that back. I collect those. And it's clearly just like a cheap pen. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. So it's just... Filling in these little mundane moments that you have throughout your day with patients regardless of who they are. And you can start to sprinkle in laughs that way. And a step further is 
a big part of stand-up comedy is knowing your audience. So it's having the context for who you're talking to. Now, I don't know how in-depth your charts are, if someone is a fan of a certain team or things like that that you could keep track of to where when you do see this patient coming in, you may be able to think of just a funny line about, oh, the game that week or something. And it, it I mean, it could be as silly as if they didn't do well, it's like, oh man, I could have thrown a better t interception than that guy or something. Yeah. Just very silly stuff. Yeah, one thing I'll do on my charts is for some of the visits, if like they're going on a trip, I'll put in the chart note, it'll say, have fun in Florida, because I live in New York and everyone goes to Florida. So, although here it's pronounced Florida, because of the accent, you put an R. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, don't go to Florida. <laughs> have fun. I won't, I won't tease someone about their accent, but just here on the podcast where they, you know, don't hear me. Uh, they'll say, have fun in Florida, and then it's in the chart notes. So, when I go in next time, I'm looking at what I wrote, and it said, oh, how was, and then, you know, interject a joke. And I guess, you know, Florida being a perennial punching bag, I guess. And you're, you're, you know, you're in Atlanta, so we can we can say things about Florida. I guess you could make a joke about that, you know, about all the retirees from New York that go there, something like that. So, yeah, there's and I guess, again, it comes up again. The bar is so low for what people expect. Like we're not we're not expected to be professional stand up comedians. Just make mm -hmm. little silly, not even that funny jokes, like little, you know, observations like the pen thing or the dial up. And then, yeah. you know, you can use it over and over again. Because to, to each patient, it's a new set. Exactly. And if people don't know, comedians do have a, like a rehearsed set. And we go from show to show, basically doing that set. We'll develop new jokes and things like that. But for that context, yeah, if there's things you're picking up on that is happening throughout the day with every patient, you can start to think of funny little silly puns or dad jokes. They could be very silly. If you have a stethoscope, you could be like, is this thing on? Or what, you know, I mean, very silly stuff. I mean, even even for you, cause you're the you're ENT, correct? Yes. So like if there was if there was a patient you had a funny rapport with and you like look in their ear and you could be like, funny, I can see all the way through. That is interesting. You know, like they don't have a brain. If it was like yeah. someone younger who you had a rapport with, but a big thing is, of course, knowing your audience and knowing what they're going to be receptive to or not. So that's why my approach was giving advice more on just the generic day-to-day -day things that you go through that can spice up your day and also the patient's day. Is there anything we should be avoiding? I mean, I think not necessarily. We've got urologists here. You know, we've got yeah. obstetricians <laughs> and they're, this is like, <laughs> that's what they're dealing with. So, and drugs are, you know, what we're prescribing. So, okay, forget I said that. <laughs> so I'll just ask you, the professional, what should we be avoiding? What are the pitfalls to avoid when we're, you know, trying new jokes? Of course, you know, self-deprecation. I, I wouldn't want to go to a doctor who then makes jokes about how they're not qualified to be a doctor. Whatever way, even a silly throwaway line, you don't want to insert any doubt into the patient's mind. I, th I think another one is anything political, it, anything... And that's me being a clean comedian. I also like will teach clean comedy classes. And a big thing that I talk about are just the general topics when I do corporate events or fundraisers. Most people request I don't talk about sex, drugs, race, and politics. It's just those topics, even if you do it in a clean and fun way, it can just trigger people and be divisive and make people uncomfortable. So that's just... Those have just been kind of common requests, and I think that would definitely translate into the doctor's office, that even if it's a, a sterile joke, if you will, that it's still, it can trigger people the wrong way. So it's yeah. best to avoid those. I've found even when you're on the same page with people about that kind of stuff, you end up like going down this rabbit hole of just like confirming, right? You're like, oh yeah, and then it ends up like sucking a lot of time away from the visit that could be spent talking about something that really more connected to the patient than just the fact that you both read the same newspaper exactly from them really more about either what they're there for or something that's about them not about someone else that you both have both happen to agree on so i think even if yeah. you're on the same page you're gonna end up down this rabbit hole and that ends up being time consuming
Maybe, yeah, and that, I guess that could be good for like building rapport early on in the patient relationship, perhaps, just to build that context, and so you get to know this person in a more three dimensional way. So yeah. every time you see them, you have these touch points that you can start to refer back to, and a callback, if you will. But that's another technique that you could do if you opened up with a joke. Let's say at the beginning of the, I was about to say a uh, set. But at the beginning of the yeah. session, yeah, the you account. make the joke about the pin, then before you leave, you could make another joke about the pin or really the yeah. same joke. And that's called a callback in comedy is where it's a joke you said earlier in the set that you then repeat later. So that's a good way to get a silly laugh, if you will. I love the callback because it really it makes the patient feel like you're in on the same joke. So that mm -hmm. really builds the rapport really well. So if you start off with a joke and then end with the same joke, I like the callback. It's, that's, I feel like, really good for rapport building. Because, oh, me yeah. and the doctor, we've got this, like, inside joke that we both get. Yeah, because even, like, you know, I'm sure you deal with people Googling stuff and then coming in and thinking they know the answer before you. So and that's another thing that maybe a lot of doctors have to deal with. So having a joke about Dr. Google or saying, well, I, I promise you, Dr. Google didn't go to med school. It's not a killer line, but it's a line that will evoke still an emotional response. And they'll laugh, especially if you laugh. If you, I, I'm sure doctors may get nervous, but well, I don't want to take a swing even on a silly joke. But I promise you, if you laugh at the joke after you say it, nine times out of ten at least, the patient will laugh as well. There's yeah. like a tribal response with laughter. That's why comedy clubs are very condensed and intimate and the ceilings are low a lot of the times and the chairs are close together because it's a tribal experience. So when someone laughs, there is this almost mirroring that happens, which a lot of times it can be a cheat for comedians that if you see a comedian laughing at a lot of their jokes, it can be seen as a cheat that them laughing coaxes the audience to laugh instead of just yeah. the actual punchline. That's a good trick for doctors that when you do make an attempt at that joke, Laugh as you're saying it, and they will almost always laugh at it. Yeah, yeah. Also, if you're deadpanning it, they might not know you well enough <laughs> to be able to read that it's a joke. Exactly. Seriously. That's, my, that's one of my problems. <laughs> it tends to be more deadpan, and they're, especially if it's a patient, they're not sure what to make of me. Yeah, they're like, what? what yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a fine, yeah, it's a fine line for sure. Actually, the Dr. Google, that, was, that gave me an idea which is you can reference Dr. Google. Oh, you know what? I went to med school with Dr. Google. Yes. A student, last in the class. Oh, barely got by. <laughs> not even sure he graduated. Exactly. Yep, exactly. And doctors can recycle jokes. It's like if a doctor heard you just say that now, and they're like, oh, I'm going to try that. Yeah, I mean, all is fair. If if at any point you guys can share jokes with each other of something that worked, it, it can even be that simple that where someone comes up with a funny joke idea and you may share it with other doctors of, hey, this really worked when the computer was going slow or whatnot. It's really lower, just, I just, I can't emphasize, just lower the bar and lower the expectations that if you just say something happy, the, I was about to say the audience, the patient will mirror that a lot of the time, most of the time, but you're at the doctor, so the circumstances can vary widely. So it'll, a lot of it comes down to context and really just knowing your audience, your Reading patient. The room. Yeah. <laughs> Reading the room. If one of the listeners, if you do steal one of these jokes, at least, you know, share the podcast and subscribe yeah. <laughs> and five star review, please. You're, you're an excellent audience, by the way. You're an excellent audience. You're good at this. You're... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm having a blast. So let's say we try Maybe we pushed the limit a little too far. You know, we got comfortable with the patient. Mm -hmm. So we decided to try a joke that was maybe a little too much, didn't land, or just wasn't funny. How do we save that? How do we salvage the relationship and the connection with the patient? If it's a joke that just completely misses, there's two ways you could do it where you just ignore that it ever happened. And just act like, oh, no, that's just how, that's just something I said. And we'll just keep moving as if it wasn't a joke and you don't even address it. Okay. Uh, Pretend it never happened. Yeah. Or just there could be a line of like, oh, oh, sorry, I promise I'm a better doctor than a comedian. Yeah. yeah. And it's just a, a little thing you can do there. If they get 
if it's more if they get like offended or kind of put off by it, I think that is an opportunity, as I mentioned, comedy being connect like connection. I think that's an opportunity just to connect with them and say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry if that was received wrong. I just, I like to make sure that I set a relaxed environment for my patients. You can just have a genuine moment with them. Because yeah. even in, I've noticed in stand-up comedy, especially early on, you know, I've been doing it almost 15 years now, that early on when jokes are missing a lot, what I learned is, just having an authentic moment with the audience can really help everyone get past the bombing that's happening. You know, I've, I've had several shows where maybe it was starting to go well and then it started to teeter off and I would just be like, hey, where did we go wrong? Which joke did I lose you on? And just not trying to be funny, but just trying to have an authentic connection with them. Yeah. And then we're able to build the show back up from there. So I think even the same on a small level like that one-on-one, -on -one, just being authentic in that can really go a long way. That's interesting that you're able to have a dialogue with an audience. Like I would think dialogue is two people, but I think that's what the root die means, right? Like dyad, that's two. An audience, how do you engage with them like that? I mean, this now has nothing to do with patient care, but I'm just curious. Yeah. Like if, when that happens, how do you communicate with them like that? Well, a misconception with stand-up is that it's a monologue, but it is actually a dialogue. A comedian is having a conversation with the audience. You're saying something, and the audience's laughter is their response. And there's a timing, and there's a flow. It's when two people are talking, one person talks, and then the other will hopefully eloquently interject on the right rhythm, and you can kind of have this, what we call roll, to where just laughter is rolling in, and you're speaking, and you guys are in tune. So there is a real rhythm to comedy and it really is a dialogue. It's not just for several of the early years as a stand up, you're just trying to remember what to say and you're trying not to just let the sweat show through your shirt and feeling it dripping down your back and you're just trying to remember the next word. But as you do it more and more and you build that confidence, then you really can listen to the audience, see how they're responding to jokes, kind of get a temperature for the room and see if you need to okay, this joke isn't kind of working, let me pivot and maybe come back to it. So even with doctors, if you have, if you kind of have an opening joke about the pen or computer or whatnot, that can almost be your thermometer for, okay, this patient, they laughed at that silly little throwaway line. Okay, this is going to be nice and relaxed and we can have a yeah. little more fun or they were really tense and you can tell they're really nervous and they just kind of want to get down to business type deal. So there, there can be a good opening joke to where it is just kind of getting a feel for that specific patient. Yeah. I'm definitely going to take that dial up joke because that's inevitably mm -hmm. happens at one point during the visit. I mean, because even for just the data entry, you know, some there, some doctors have scribes, so they're not really doing any data entry, but for those that do it ourselves, you're sitting there clicking, so you can easily make a joke about dial-up. And the fact that we still use fax machines yeah. <laughs> it lends itself to, like, it's really not hard to believe. It's not far-fetched. Far, uh, far yeah, and I can't tell you, I felt so many times where, even if it's the nurse coming in first, that it's just, they go to the computer, and they're just, like, typing and asking questions. There's no yeah, real there's connection. No there's contact. no real rapport. It's yeah, I had a person honestly, complain about that today. Yeah. Like not for me, not that I'm amazing, but, like, I've had so many doctor's visits where they don't even make eye contact. They just, like, absorbed into the computer, and they don't make eye contact, and then they leave, and you're like, what just happened? So mm -hmm. I think this is, like, <laughs> that's 101. This is, like graduate level doctor patient communication where you're working on your shtick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, what you're saying is if you're not even there, just just make sure you're at least doing the minimum of making eye contact and, and doing something to build rapport. Yeah, it's really a technique in stand up is just opening up. You want to just set the tone as quickly as possible. And the goal in stand up in like a five minute set is you want to get a laugh within 15 or 20 seconds. So it's really just, it comes down to first impressions. So just how you enter the room will really determine how that entire visit goes. So just entering with a smile, looking at them, welcoming them, good to see you. Just something as simple as that can really go a long way in that connection that will really resonate with them. I love it. This is all, this is all fantastic advice. If one of your doctors were listening, what would you want them to know? Like just picture that they are listening... 
you don't know they don't know that you're speaking directly to them but you really are what do you want <laughs> them to know about being funny oh gosh all i could think is like a turn your head and cough situation <laughs> don't make Maybe jokes during that yeah okay. <laughs> no that's a really good question that's just where my where my mind went i think it's just getting to know the patient i think acting like you care at least i think now more than ever we almost feel like because i did i had a doctor that was in a small office and then he became part of a bigger office and the bigger office feels more like an assembly line almost of yes. you go in you sign in you sit here go in this room wait here comes someone wait more here comes the doctor it just any and i like the smaller office cuz it just felt even just the feeling was like oh they care more yeah. they're invested in my health and not just kind of okay checking a box coming in this room so i really think even not just humor based is just at least being authentically interested in creating a connection with me beyond just like okay well last year it looked like this was the this was where we were and then this year it's just Having just, I think that eye contact is what really I keep coming back to because a lot of comedy is likability. So just to, even just putting on an act that I'm likable and you enjoy spending time with me and it's not as transactional. Okay. So what I'm hearing is what you want this, doctor, your doctor to know is at least pretend that you'd like me. At yeah, I was about to say, did, did this just turn into therapy? All of a sudden I was like, just tell me I'm a good boy. Yeah, it was just... <laughs> No, no, but yeah. you make an excellent point. Like, like, be interested in me as a person that's not just the sum of my symptoms. Like, be interested in yeah. me. And, I, and actually, there was something we talked about a couple of weeks ago on the show, and these don't always air in order, but it's like noticing something that's on the person, noticing something on their keychain or the shirt that they're wearing or the earrings or something around their neck or something that you can, like, comment on. That like, yes shows them that you're interested in them as a person. And, you know, everyone's got something that you can comment on. A tattoo, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. And that's another, popped another uh, idea I had for doctors that even it's not even just if you're saying something funny, I, I recently saw a nurse that just had a fun, like, key fob. It was like where her name tag was, it had, it was like a cartoon kind of playful keychain thing that her, key card was on or whatnot so it's yeah. not even anything she said it was just a fun little piece of flair that was otherwise in just like a white coat it was just a fun pop of color that really just kind of set off that signal in my mind of like oh well that's fun yeah. even there's no comedy or laughter but it just made the situation made her more likable and it was something she just kind of had on her jacket so that's another little thing you don't have to say anything just having a fun little quirk or something, a pin or something on you. Yeah, something maybe related to your specialty, right? For the gastroenterologists out there and colorectal surgeons, you can have like a little poop emoji thing or not too, you don't want to have like truck nuts <laughs> hanging from your, if you're a urologist or in your reproductive <laughs> or something like that. That might be a, a bridge too far, but something, <laughs> something along those lines, you know, related to your specialty. Or you said anything interesting that's about yourself that shows that you as the physician are more than, you know, just the doctor. And I, I feel like sometimes patients lose that too. Like, especially when they call us when we're on call, they think that we're like just sitting, waiting for yeah. their phone call. Not like, <laughs> like my kids will often be screaming in the background. When I'm on call and, and my wife's like, guys, be quiet, be quiet. He's, Daddy's got a phone call. And I'm like, no, <laughs> what? I want my patient to be aware that like, yes, this is what's going on in my life. I'm going to help them. I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to take care of them. It helps them to recognize that there's a human being on both sides of the phone. For sure. Yeah, I think we crave that human connection now more than ever. So the more just human a doctor can be, I think the more humor they'll be able to find. Ooh, human humor. I just wanted to use my liberal arts degree right there. It's a, <laughs> that, use a little it's consonant. Alliteration. It's alliteration. Or alliteration, yeah. yes. So how do we know if we're funny? Because... I think I am, but I, <laughs> it, it, and a lot of people think they are and aren't. And some people don't realize, like, you know, my wife, you know, she was actually, I had her on the show kind of hosting with me a, a little while ago. She, a lot of times isn't, doesn't realize she's funny when she's funny. Like mm -hmm. she will make a joke 
and then is like somehow surprised when I find it hilarious. So <laughs> there's like two sides of that coin. There's the people who think they're funny that aren't and the people that don't realize that they're as funny as they really are. So how do we know? How do we read the room on something like that? Well, I, I will say you are funny. You're in there. You're definitely you're definitely funny. You have the charisma. Yes, that you can go tell. The co this comedian said I'm funny, honey. So that joke should work. We're taking my yeah. show on the road. We're doing it. We're doing medicine. Yes. <laughs> but that is an interesting question because I do get that a lot of times of people saying that they're not funny, and I I think everyone has a sense of humor. I do believe that it is like a sixth sense. I do believe it's something within all of us that you just have to start to be aware of and then you can start to tap into. So your sense of humor is really your unique, it's a unique prism you see the world. So I think for people that don't think they're funny, I would challenge them to think about their favorite comedian and or favorite movie that's a comedy and think about what about that movie or what about that comedian is funny. And there's something within that that actually reflects to them their own sense of humor and how they're funny and how they see funny to be. So even if they don't think they're organically funny, look at what they find funny. And I really think they'll find a reflection back on themselves of, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I do say funny things in traffic to myself that they can maybe then start to apply into the doctor's office. But if people think they're funny, I just, you know, go for it. Yeah, you're funny. I think it's to different levels. I think anyone can learn how to be funny and learn the skill of comedy, but it's just like with learning guitar, not everyone is gonna grow up and be Jimi Hendrix. You know, people can learn the chords, but at some point how you bend the notes and things is why there's the, comedians doing arenas right now and you know others just kind of doing open mics right now or just doing it for fun so yeah. it's all a different level and spectrum of comedy but I think everyone has it within them for sure I love that I love that philosophy and and I love that way that you describe that of like finding what you find funny and then recognizing that that's a reflection of your brand of humor and then bringing that out of yourself because it's in there somewhere so I'm going to put you on the spot for, with one last question. And okay. that is, you've already given us a, a bunch of jokes that we can all bring into the exam room tomorrow, right? Are there any more? Can you think of just one last one that you've either said in this type of a venue or heard a healthcare provider say or something? Just give us one more piece of fodder that we can bring to the exam room. I'm trying to think the Dr. Google one was really my... That was my haymaker. I'm trying to think of what all doctors could do. I was trying to think, because doctors can be late a lot of the times. So if there was a joke can about say, being- like, I was on, I'm sorry, I was on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> For oh, a doctor God, being late? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, oh, whoa, bad, ate something bad last night. Sorry, I was late. <laughs> Woof. I know, then we, we'd open up with a poop joke. I guess if it was a gastro doctor, I don't even know what the word is. Oh gosh, I wish I would've thought, I I would have thought of a different one. Let me see if I took any other notes. Testing, oh, I'm bombing at the end of the podcast. I was doing so well. Sorry, it's on the spot. So, you know, one of the questions that I asked was like, cliches or corny classic comedy tropes that we can use in healthcare, like, you know, like you said about the dial up and the pain. Mm -hmm. Maybe excited to be at the doctor. Maybe that's how you could open. Well, I will say when most people go to the doctor, maybe they're not the most excited to be at the doctor. So maybe when you walk in, you could say something about how, welcome, how are you? I know this is your favorite place to be. We'll jump right in here. And that could be just a little throwaway line to where yeah. you're addressing maybe an elephant in the room that I know you're not thrilled to be here, but you're in good hands. And I'm self-aware of we're here to do something very important and we will get to work type deal. So even just a little throwaway line and like that. Acknowledging their discomfort. Acknowledging exactly. that they're, they're there because something's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not so there something, they want something to, be. to that they're degree. There because they need to be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just a good icebreaker. 
If it doesn't work, then you can tell them that was Dr. Bradley Block that said that. <laughs> Sorry, I got that from Dr. Brad. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> the steel, if they go well, they're yours. If they don't go yeah. well, yeah, absolutely. Blame <laughs> yeah. Me. yeah, it's like, oh, that joke killed in front of the mirror. I don't know what <laughs> happened there. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, this has been amazing. Such great material for us to use in the exam room or really any patient encounter. So. I really appreciate you taking the time to have this conversation with us. So if people want to find you, if they want to find Hot Breath or Joel Byers Clean Comedy Academy, where do we find all this? Yes. Yeah. And that, yeah, my big takeaway is just to lower the bar. You don't have to craft these killer jokes. It's just the more likable you are, the more the patient will like you. And smiling and just laughing at your own jokes or what you're saying really can go a long way. And just setting a fun rapport that it, you don't have to be a killer comedian or whatnot. You know, just those little things that we talked about today can make a big difference. So if you enjoyed me, you can get more information about me on my website, joelbyerscomedy.com. That's where you can reach out to me directly or social media. All my social media is at joelbyerscomedy. And my podcast is called Hot Breath, which is on YouTube and all podcast platforms. And that is interviews I've done with over 400 comedians all about comedy. And I also do weekly Q&As on there. And I love comedy and I love getting to incorporate it into different worlds, kind of like we're doing here and other events I've done. So if you want to book a comedian, I'm happy to perform at your holiday parties or birthday parties or whatever you would like as well. So get in touch. Amazing. Well, we've got lots of physicians that have conferences and events and stuff like that. So definitely reach out. And once again, Joel Byers, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. So please share it or like it or comment on a social media post or write us a five-star review. Thank us again for listening to the Physician's Guide to Doctoring.